Hello everyone and welcome to Grade Up. My name is Ashish Shawat and today we will be discussing bearing capacity. Now this is the fourth session for soil mechanics in the last. Okay, so uh, bearing capacity and uh, also shallow shallow foundation. Okay, so before uh, going into the concepts, we'll first of all see the types of foundation. So basic types of foundations. Okay. So, types of foundation, just a small review so that you may get an idea what are the foundation types. Now, first is isolated, okay. So, in isolated foundation, there will just be a single footing, okay. So, this is generally for very small works, okay. Uh, for boundary walls and uh, all, just a single footing, okay. So, isolated footing. Now, second is strip footing. Now, strip footing will be similar, the cross section will look similar to the isolated footings, but its its length is large. Okay. So, for greater length, it runs. Length is much greater than the this cross section width. Okay. So, this is known as the strip footing. Now, third one is raft. Okay, so if there are uh, large number of footings which are required, so in that case raft is used. So for the entire plan area is casted with concrete. Okay, like this. Okay, so the entire area will be casted. Okay, so instead of these individual footings and columns, we have used entire area. Okay. Fourth one is combined. Now in combined the plan uh, it will look something like this there will be multiple columns in a footing okay so this will this will be uh, known as the combined and for deep foundation there is piling okay so if this is the ground level piles are like this okay so there will be load resting from this and also due to friction this okay so friction uh, depending on various mechanisms, the um, actions, the piles are uh, segregated, like end bearing pile, friction pile, okay. So, all these types, they are, that comes in the deep foundation chapter, okay. So, these are some of the types, which are uh, types of foundations, which are used, okay. Then there is some general requirement of foundations okay so uh, what are some of the some of the criteria which are required for foundation for the safe working of the foundation so for satisfactory performance there are three basic criteria now first one is shear failure criteria okay so this is the strength criteria and this is the most prominent one okay now the second is settlement criteria okay this is shear failure criteria now this these two criteria are similar to uh, one which you have studied in rcc now flexure, shear, they come under the, under these uh, shear failure criteria like this is strength criteria. So similar to the uh, flexure and shear criteria in uh, what we call the RCC structures that is for the, this is similar to those for the soil, okay. Now in that case, uh, you had the deflection criteria, okay, uh, deflection, anchorage. So those are uh, the serviceability criteria. Now settlement criteria is similar to that, okay. And the third one is location and depth criteria. Location and depth criteria. Okay. Uh, location and depth, what do you mean by this? It means that its location and depth must be such that it is 
not affected by seasonal changes okay so like the soil must not be uh, the footing must not be in the uh, soils of black cotton okay because black cotton soil you know it has a property of swelling and shrinkage so in that case uh, the uh, failure of footing may occur so that comes under the location and depth criteria okay please take a screenshot of this and we'll move to the next one all right now some of the basic terms which are important you might have studied studied these but for uh, clarification we just study them okay so what is gross pressure first term is gross pressure okay so uh, let us also draw a let us also draw a footing here. So, if this is a footing, this is ground level, okay. This is width B, this is depth of footing DF, and some load is coming here, okay. Alright. So, So, this is the footing, okay. This is P, let us suppose. All right, okay. So, what is gross pressure? Okay. So, gross pressure is total pressure intensity at the base of the footing. At this point, what is the pressure? Okay. So, total pressure at the base of footing this is gross pressure now second term is net pressure okay so this is gross net pressure will be the pressure in excess of overburden pressure pressure in excess of overburden pressure okay so at the base of the footing the this load uh, p plus whatever is the overburden if you add these two then that is the gross pressure but if you remove this overburden okay overburden will be gamma into df okay whatever is the unit weight into df that is the pressure applied by the overburden at the base of the footing and this is the external load so net pressure will be this gross pressure minus overburden pressure so that is pressure in excess of the overburden pressure okay now third is ultimate bearing capacity okay so here we have not considered the failure okay this this is uh, this these two terms are nothing to do with, do with the failure it is just whatever is the load coming okay now we'll talk about the capacity of these footings to take the load Okay, so what is ultimate bearing capacity? It is maximum gross intensity of loading which can be applied without causing shear failure okay just note this term shear failure okay so ultimate bearing capacity is maximum intensity of loading which can be applied to the base of the footing without causing shear failure to occur okay so uh, you have to prevent the shear failure so just on the verge of uh, shear failure whatever is the load intensity coming on the footing that is known as the ultimate bearing capacity okay now sec fourth term is net ultimate bearing 
capacity okay so net ultimate bearing capacity now this will be maximum net loading intensity without causing shear failure okay so uh, this is represented by q u this is represented by q and u okay so q net ultimate will be q u minus gamma d f okay so this is in f uh, in axis of overburden what is the maximum net loading intensity without causing shear failure okay so this is net ultimate bearing capacity then there is uh, net safe bearing capacity bearing capacity and it is represented by q and s okay so net safe bearing capacity is whatever is the net ultimate divided by what is the factor of safety which you have used okay so this is net safe bearing capacity and the four six term is safe bearing capacity qs okay now q safe is q net ultimate divided by factor of safety plus gamma df okay so this is the safe bearing capacity in all these terms of bearing capacity you have to take care of the words without shear failure okay so this is the formula now okay so this is the safe bearing capacity this is uh, Now there is two more terms that is safe bearing pressure okay safe bearing pressure that is QPS okay. So like I have told you bearing capacity the ultimate or uh, net ultimate or net safe or safe all these terms are associated with shear failure. Now the second criteria was settlement and the loading intensity corresponding to to the criteria which satisfies the settlement criteria it is safe bearing pressure okay so safe bearing bearing pressure is maximum net loading intensity that can be allowed allowed without settlement exceeding permissible value without settlement exceeding permissible value okay so the footing should satisfy the settlement criteria okay it should satisfy the settlement criteria okay now there is one more term allowable bearing price pressure okay it is q a net so what is this allowable bearing pressure this will be it will be minimum of either q safe or q ps that is safe bearing pressure okay so this is the allowable bearing pressure this will satisfy both settlement criteria as well as shear failure criteria so allowable bearing pressure is associated with this do not get confused with safe bearing or allowable the definitions you should be uh, very clear with okay please take a screenshot okay now we'll move to the methods of determining the bearing capacity so first among these methods is r analytical method okay 
so analytical methods these are based on shear failure criteria important point is based on shear failure criteria so these are based on shear failure criteria okay now there are certain shear failures okay general shear failure local shear failure okay and there is punching shear failure okay so there are three types of uh, shear failures which are which occurs okay so this occurs in dense sands okay this will occur in dense sands okay local shear failure will occur in loose sands and this occurs in very loose sand okay then there is a well defined failure pattern failure pattern and heaving heaving occurs okay in this case the soil bulges okay while here only slight heaving and here there is no heaving at all okay so these are the three mechanisms of shear failure one is general shear failure then local shear failure and punching shear failure okay the, uh, these punching shear failures will be in deep foundations okay then there is one more criteria see so this this is the these are the analytical one is the analytical method second one is what your building code specifies building code building codes and third one are the field tests like spt standard penetration test okay then there is plate load test and static cone penetration test okay so these are the three main methods by which bearing capacity can be found okay now we'll see one by one now the first is terzaghi bearing capacity theory theory okay so terzaghi bearing capacity theory there were certain uh, assumptions okay so in small bullets i will write those because those are important from examination point of view he said the footing is strip so length is much greater than the width of the footing okay that is the meaning of strip footing now second was soil is homogeneous and isotropic so the properties of soil will remain throughout the soil structure okay so this this point means this then there is 2d plane strain condition okay so along the third dimension the strain is zero okay then there the loading is vertical and symmetric okay so due to this observation the analysis will become easy okay so that's why this assumption has been taken then general fear uh, general shear failure is considered the failure criteria is general shear failure okay then the ground is horizontal it is not inclined because then the analysis will become difficult okay then also the footing is surface footing that is the depth of footing is zero it is on the it is kept on the surface like this it has been assumed okay then and uh, shear strength is found by shear strength by 
मोहर कूलम्ब क्राइटेरिया ओके सो दीज आर सम ऑफ द एजम्पन विच वर टेकन बाय बाय तरजागिर इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड द बियरिंग कैपेसिटी ओके सो स्ट्रिप फुटिंग होमोजीनस एंड आइसोट्रोपिक सॉइल टू डी प्लेन स्टेन कंडीशन वर्टिकल एंड सिमेट्रिक लोडिंग जनरल शेयर फेलियर हॉरिजॉन्टल ग्राउंड सरफेस फुटिंग एंड दिस द मोहर कुलम क्राइटेरिया नाउ तरजागी एनालाइज एंड फाउंड थ्री जोन अंडर द फुटिंग वेन द फेलियर अकर थ्री जोन ही फाउंड नाउ द फर्स्ट वन इज जोन फर्स्ट वॉज जोन ऑफ इलास्टिक इक्वली ब्रियम ओके जोन टू वॉज रेडियल शेयर जोन रेडियल शेयर जोन एंड जोन थ्री वॉज जोन ऑफ प्लास्टिक इक्वलियम और ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज रैंकाइन पेसिव जोन ओके do not get very uh, deep into this theory because from objective point of view that will that will not be important just remember these bullet points okay they will be helpful to you then tarzagi please take a screenshot of this and uh, let the equations okay. so The ultimate bearing capacity Q U is equals to C N C gamma D F N Q plus point five B gamma N gamma. Okay. Now this is valid for strip footing. This formula is valid for strip footing. Okay. Where N C N Q and N gamma are bearing capacity factors. and they depend on angle of friction phi only okay just remember this point also at times objective question do get are uh, the, you will be given three four options and uh, in which factor this will depend depends on effective stress or depends on other factors and uh, one of the option will be phi only so that will be the correct answer okay also there is couple of points which are to be noted here one is for pure cohesive soil that is for clays nc is 5.7 nq is equals to 1 and n gamma is 0 okay so this is very widely uh, this is let me write it clearly so this is widely used okay nc 5.7 nq 1 and n gamma 0 okay then this was for the square uh, strip footing okay now q is equals to 1.3 cnc plus gamma df nq plus 0.4 b gamma n gamma this is for square shaped footing 1.3 cnc gamma df n q plus 0.3 b gamma n gamma this is for circular okay and for rectangular 1 plus 0.3 b by l into n c plus gamma df n q plus 1 minus 0.2 b by l into 0.5 b gamma n gamma this is for rectangular shaped footing okay so these are the equations this is for strip footing this is for uh, square this is circular and this is rectangular so these are as per that as per tarzagi okay now there is also uh, since uh, in bearing capacity we have written that these are uh, uh, tarzagi consider a general shear failure so if suppose local shear failure lsf occurs local shear failure so for local shear failure the cohesion value will become 2 by 3c whatever the value is given to you you have to put 2 by 3c okay 
and if and whatever uh, what is the value of phi here so tan phi m will be equal to 2 by 3 of tan phi okay so it will be 2 by 3 of tan phi also one more thing is important here uh, let me write it here so for angle of friction phi greater than 36 you have to consider general shear failure at times in numericals the angle of friction is given to you and this failure condition is not provided to you okay so in that case the general shear failure uh, for phi greater than 36 you have to consider general shear failure for phi less than 28 degree you have to consider local shear failure okay so for uh, 20, not 28 it's 29 degree okay so you have to consider local shear failure but if NC, NQ and N gamma are given in the question, question then use those values, okay. In that case, these two clauses become immaterial because they have been already provided to you. So, you do not need to consider if phi is greater, if suppose uh, the angle of uh, angle is given to you. Uh, 34 degrees and NC and NQ and gamma are given to you. In that case, you should not have any doubt or question that uh, you will use this one or because it's, it is not fulfilling this general shear failure uh, parameter. So, the value of NC, NQ and N gamma uh, will be different. Okay. If it is given in the question, you have to blindly use those values. If they are not provided to you and uh, with respect to the, uh, since they are the function of phi, Okay, so by, by phi you can see it, if it is general shear failure or local shear failure. So in that case, you have to calculate these two values. Okay, then from this phi m you will calculate nc, nq, n gamma and put it in the equation depending on the type of the footing. Okay, so if it is given the values are given in question, then blindly use those. Please take a screenshot. Now, this was the Terzaghi theory. Now, there is one more theory which is very prominently asked in question. The, uh, the formulas of that theory are very important from examination point of view. That is Skempton. Okay. So, Skempton bearing capacity theory. So, this is for first of all important point is this is applicable for saturated clays only. Okay, it is not applicable for questionless soils. Okay, and it states that Q net ultimate is equal to Cu into Nc. Please take care of this one. Okay, it is saying Q net ultimate is Cu into Nc. Directly, this is the formula. While in uh, Tarzaghi, we were calculating Q ultimate, that is ultimate bearing capacity. Here we are calculating, this theory will give first give you Q net ultimate. Okay, So, net ultimate bearing capacity, it will give to you. Okay, So, there are certain criteria df by b, if it is equal to 0. Then second criteria is df by b greater than 0 and less than 2.5 okay and third criteria is df by b greater than equal to 2.5 okay so these are the three criteria okay now for strip footing nc is equals to 5 if df by b is equals to 0 then for strip footing the value of nc which you have to put is 5 okay for square and circular the value of NC which you have to put is 6, okay. And for rectangular, for the, uh, these formulas are for DF by B is equals to 0, it is 
5 into 1 plus 0.2 b by l okay so these are for df by b is equals to 0 now if from 0 to 2.5 the value is falling then for strip it is 5 into 1 plus 0.2 df by b okay for square circular it is 6 into 1 plus 0.2 0 0.2 df by b okay and for this it is 1 plus 0 0.2 b by l into 1 plus 0 0.2 df by b okay so this is the criteria for 0 to 2.5 now for greater than or equal to 2.5 for strip footing nc is 7.5 okay for this square and circular nc is 9 okay and for rectangular 7.5 into 1 plus 0.2 b by l okay so this is the entire table okay please take a screenshot so see you uh, you can calculate you may be given the uh, compressive strength unconfined compressive strength qu and from that you can calculate cu okay so unconfined compressive strength is two times of cu so uh, cu you can get qu by 2 okay that you will get nc you can work out from here depending on the condition which it is satisfying first of all calculate the value of df by b okay then see which table it will fit then see which type of footing you have if it is strip square circular or rectangular uh, whatever be the case just earmark the formula and you will get the values in the, put it here and you will get the q net ultimate you will get q net ultimate okay just take care of this one a lot of students make mistake in this one okay please take a screenshot yes now these are the analytical methods now we'll see some field methods so first among them is standard penetration test okay so entire procedure we will not study we will just study the key points okay so first is this is for granular soils okay the test is for the for granular soils okay now you will use a split spoon sampler split spoon sampler okay the arrangement is something like this okay and uh, by this the sampler is on here okay so okay so here this fruits split spoon sampler is there and there are some weights here so the impact load is of 65 kg and height of fall is 75 centimeters okay just remember these key things because in examination they may appear 65 kg is the impact load and height of fall is 75 centimeters okay so for first 150 mm no reading is taken because that soil is considered uh, not good for calculating the strength of the soil okay then number of blows for subsequent 300 mm depth is taken okay so this you will take as n values okay and then a number of n values are average to get an average value of n okay then you have to apply some corrections okay so first correction is correction due to overburden pressure okay so in this n1 you will get n into 350 upon sigma bar plus 70 where sigma bar is effective stress in kilo newton per meter square okay and this effective stress will be calculated at the level uh, where you are finding the soil uh, strength soil uh, bearing capacity you are finding 
okay. So, at that depth this sigma bar will be calculated. This sigma bar should not be greater than 280 kilo Newton per meter square. If it is greater than that, then this overburden pressure will not be, overburden correction will not be applied, okay. Now, second correction is dilatancy correction and this is for water table, water, okay. So, in this case N2 is equals to 15 plus half of N1 minus 15, okay. And if water table is at great depth, then this correction will not be applied, okay. Just take care water table is quite close to the ground or to the test side, okay. So, this is about the overburden pressure, this sorry about the standard penetration test, okay. This one. Now, here itself I will discuss the plate load test. Now, uh, two, three formulas are very important from plate load test, okay. First of all, this is also for cohesionless soil, okay and uh, plates from 300 mm to 750 mm size are used, okay. Now, for dense sand and clay, okay, certain formulas are recommended. So, for bearing capacity, if the soil is dense sand, then the bearing capacity of footing to the bearing capacity divided by bearing capacity of plate, P is for plate, F is for footing, okay, is equals to BF upon BP. This is width of footing, this is width of plate, okay, whatever is the experimental uh, width of plate, 300 mm to 750 mm, whatever plate you are using, okay. While for clays, QUF is equals to QUP, okay. So, this is the bearing capacity criteria. Second one is settlement, okay. So, SF upon SP that is settlement of footing divided by settlement of plate is equals to BF BP plus 0 0.3 divided by BP BF plus 0 0.3 whole square, okay. And this BF and BP here, okay. So, this is for dense sand, for clays it is divided by BF upon BP, okay. So, BF and BP are in meters, okay. Just remember this thing from this formula, okay. So, these four formulas are very important from plate load test, okay. So, here QUF divided by QUP is equal to BF upon BP, for clays QUF is equal to QUP. For settlement criteria, this is the formula, here BF, BF, BP you have to put it in meters, okay. If you are putting in mm, then this will be 0 0.3 in 2000, that is 300 you have to put in this formula, okay. Please take a screenshot. Now, there is one more concept that is contact pressure for various types of footing and on different types of soils. We will discuss that. So, first of all, if I talk about the, so let us make a table here. A rigid footing and here flexible footing, okay. So, two types of footing. Now, soils, one is granular soil, okay, and the second is clay or cohesive soil, okay. Okay. 
Now, first is contact pressure. Okay. So, if the footing is rigid, first of all, you have to settlement. Here also contact pressure. Second is settlement. Contact pressure and settlement. Contact pressure and settlement. So, if the footing is rigid, then uh, this settlement will be uniform. Okay. So, settlement depends on the type of footing. If footing is rigid, then settlement will be uniform. So, in this case also, it will be uniform. Now, come to flexible footings, it will be inverse, that is contract, contact pressure will be uniform. Okay. So, contact pressure will be uniform. Just remember this, for rigid footing, this settlement will be uniform. So, if footing is something like this, okay. so underneath, if this is something, so if it is settling, it will have equal settlement. Okay. So, settlement will be uniform if the footing is rigid, it, it, it will not depend on type of soil. If it is flexible, then contact pressure will remain uniform and settlement will depend on the type of soil. Okay. Now, come to contact pressure. So, if the footing is rigid and the soil is granular. Okay. So, in that case, it will be contact pressure will be minimum at edge and maximum at center. Because at edges, the soil is granular, there will not be any binding with the footing surface. Okay. So, at this, this point, there is no connection with the connection of the granular soil with footing. Okay. While here, due to the combined action, there will be more resistance. Okay. So, there that is why this is minimum at edge and maximum at center. Okay. Now, for clay, it will be inverse, that is maximum at edge because the clay has cohesive power. Okay. It will bind with the, uh, this soils, the footing will bind with the soils okay. and it, it will experience, it will have more resistance. So, maximum at, at edge and minimum at center. Okay. Then here settlement, flexible footing. Okay. Again, just use that criteria, granular soils, it does not have any contact. So, it will be, the settlement will be maximum at edge because there will not be any resistance. So, maximum at edge and minimum at center. Okay. Maximum at a minimum at center. While if you talk about the clay soils, it will bind. So, it will not allow the settlement. So, minimum at edge and maximum at center. Okay. So, this is the entire discussion about this. You can take a screenshot. Okay. This will di directly be helpful for you in the examinations. Okay. So, this was about the discussion about the bearing capacity and shallow foundation. We will now move to the questions part. So, this is the first question on your screens, you can see. According to Tarzaghi, the net ultimate bearing capacity of strip footing on clay is given by. Okay. So, it is a strip footing and it is a clay. Okay. So, you know that clay, uh, net ultimate is equal to Q u minus gamma d f and ultimate is C n c plus gamma d f n q plus 0.5. B gamma n gamma and minus gamma df. Now, since it is given that the soil is clay, so nc will be 5.7, nq will be 1, and gamma will be 0. Okay. So, put this 0, this 1, and put this 5.7. So, q net ultimate will be 5.7c plus gamma df 
plus 0 minus gamma df. So, if you cancel out this net ultimate is equals to 5.7 C. Okay. So, option is C here, correct option is here C. Okay. So, I hope you understood this. Okay. Just by seeing also you can uh, solve this question, just for the explanation point of view I have written this much. In examination you should not use this much, it will only waste your time. Okay. So, come to the second question now. Now, what is it saying? You have been given the gross bearing capacity. Okay. Q gross you are given 430 kilo Newton per meter square. Okay. And uh, depth of footing is 1 meter. Also, unit weight is given to you 20 kilo Newton per meter cube. Uh, gamma is written 20 kilo Newton per meter square, please correct it, okay. it will not be 2, it will be 3, okay. so it will not be 2, it will be cube 3. Okay. So, what is the net bearing capacity? So, Q net will be Q gross minus gamma df that is 430 minus gamma is 20 df is 1. So, Q net will be 410 kilo Newton per meter square. Okay. So, correct option is A. Okay. So, A is the correct answer. I am sure uh, many of you have solved this correctly. All right. Now, moving to the third question. Now, when the water table is under the base of a footing at a depth equal to the width of the footing, the bearing capacity of soil is. Okay. So, there are certain corrections when water table is at different depth. Okay. I have not discussed it in the lecture because from objective point of view, it is not that, that much important. The, just the basic understanding should be there. So, if it is B and if this depth is equal also equal to the this width b okay now there are three stages if water table is at this level okay second is if water table is at somewhere this level and if water table is at this level okay so if it is at this level then this the value of gamma which you will used there are three terms okay c and c this is first term plus gamma df n q plus 0.5 b gamma n gamma for strip footing this is the formula ok. So, if the water table is at this level highest level ok. So, in that case in second formula this is gamma d f n q over burden ok. In that case you will use the modified value of gamma for this. In third term this is with respect to this this soil ok. So, this is already submerged if the soil uh, if the water table is at this level. So, here you will use gamma submerged. Okay. You will use gamma submerged in this case. Second case if the water table is at this level in that case this soil is considered dry and gamma you will use whatever is given to you. But if uh, this third term you will use the modified gamma. Okay. And third case if the uh, water table is below this uh, below a uh, depth B below the base of the footing then in that case you will not modify any any of these values. Okay. So, here also it is saying when the water table is under the base of the footing at a depth equal to width of the footing. So, it is that it is that water table is at this level. Okay. So, there will not be any modifications hence the bearing capacity will remain same. Okay. So, D is the correct option to our question. Moving to the next question now. Now, here you have to find the this is the question of plate load test, you have to find the settlement. Okay. So, just first of all extract the data 300 mm square plate is there. Okay. So, BP is 300 mm and uh, the settlement of plate is SP is 15 
mm okay now the soil is cohesionless cohesionless soil so this will give you which formula you have to use okay loading intensity is given to you and then the uh, breadth of footing is given to you that is 1000 mm or sorry it is 1 meter this is equals to 0.3 meter okay now you have to find what you have to find the settlement of footing so for granular soils or cohesionless soils the formula which is which is to be used is bf bp plus 0.3 upon bp bf plus 0.3 whole square just put the values and you will get the answer okay sp is 15 into bf is 1 into bp is 0.3 plus 0.3 see i am putting the value of bf and bp in meters okay so just take care of that into 1 plus 0.3 whole square so if you simplify this the value which you will be getting is 35.5 mm and it is closer to i think option number b okay so b is our correct answer okay just simple calculation just uh, remember to put the values of bfbp in meters and see the soil if it, it if it would have been clay so clay then sf upon sp would be equal to bf upon bp okay so formula varies okay next question now Now here two circular footings of diameter D1 and D2 are resting on the surface of the same purely cohesive soil. The ratio of their gross ultimate bearing capacity, okay. So here Q ultimate will be simply 5.7 C because the footing is surface footing and it is on purely cohesive soil. So since the dimensions of the footing are not creating any effect on the formula. Okay, so that's why the ratio will be q u one divided by q u two will be one. Okay, so b is the option to this question. Okay, so this is our correct answer. Okay, so this is the formula. In the formula, the dimensions of the footing will not create any effect. Okay. All right. Next question. Now this is the question for immediate settlement. Okay. Now here the formula which is to be used is you might have studied it is QB into 1 minus mu square IF upon ES. Okay. So here the values are given to you. Q is how much? It is 180 into B is how much? It is 3 meters into 1 minus mu is 0.5, IF is 0 0.85, just it is simple formula based question, okay. You just have to extract the data correctly and this you will get in meters. So, if you in order to convert it into mm, 1000 mm, okay. And if you simplify that, you will get 5.74 mm, okay. So, the option is B. So, B is the correct answer here. Okay. So, this is to calculate the immediate settlement QB into 1 minus mu square up into IF upon ES. Okay. All right. Next, next question. Now, now here the contact pressure distribution is uh, asked. Okay. First of all, what is it is? rigid footing okay so rigid footing has uniform settlement okay rigid, rigid footings have uniform settlement so contact pressure there is either granular soil or clay soil okay so uh, here it is co cohesionless soil okay so, for cohesionless soils, I have already told you 
contact pressure is minimum at edges and maximum at center okay so whatever fits the parameter okay it is maximum at center and zero at edges okay yes so c is fitting the description here so like this you have to deduce the these type of questions for first of all you see which type of footing is there for which type of footing uh, which either settlement or contact pressure is uniform okay and then move to the uh, these two you can segregate okay for contact pressure granular clay both are different inverse to each other so you can work out those okay okay so next question now this is the last question now in this case you have to calculate the net ultimate bearing capacity using Scampton okay so net ultimate is equals to Cu into Nc so two things you need unconfined compressive strength Qu is given to you as 100 kilonewton per meter square so Cu will be Qu by 2 that is 50 kilonewton per meter square second thing is to calculate the value of Nc so for that first step is df by b okay so depth of footing is 2 divided by b is 1 okay so df by b is coming out to be 2 so it will fall in the case of df by b greater than 0 less than 2.5 okay so for that case whatever what is the type of footing what is its shape it is rectangular so for rectangular the value of nc was 5 into 1 plus 0.2 b by l into 1 plus 0.2 df by b okay so 5 into 1 plus 0.2 b is 1 l is 2 1 plus 0.2 df by b is 2 okay if you will calculate the value of nc which you will get is 7.7 .7. just put put here nc is 50 it is 7.7 .7. So the value which you will be getting is 385 kilonewton per meter square. Okay, so C is the correct option. Yes. So this is the correct option. I hope you understood this. Okay. See the uh, this RRBJ. CBT one, it is probably held by end of May or first week of June. Just yesterday, uh, they have updated a, a language change portal. So they apparently they are active even in the election uh, times. Okay, so just make sure by this time you uh, uh, finish the your CBT one syllabus. Okay and get prepared for that just to clear the cutoff because marks will this is only qualifying nature marks won't be counted okay so just prepare for that very uh, well okay uh, you can join the course on uh, even on uh, grade up okay uh, a paid course is being uh, executed here you can just watch those okay so this will be it for the soil mechanics thank you for watching this video and uh, i wish you all the best for uh, coming exam okay uh, have a great day ahead